everybody, Pet Huntoon here from Technique Junkies. Today we're going to be using gilding flakes and a little bit of glitter with a stencil to create a pretty cool uh, texture on a card. And this is what, you, you can see, this here's the card, sorry, it's upside down. But here you can see the texture, you can really see the glitter and the gilding flakes. Yeah, maybe I can catch the light a little bit differently here. But you can see the gil glitter in between the gilding flakes. This is a stunning card in person. It has the beautiful gilding flakes, and then it's got this, this the uh, the glitter, which gives it this amazing velvety texture. I can't explain it to you any other way than that velvety texture. So we're actually going to be starting this with a couple of things. We're going to be using Nouveau gilding flakes, and these come in radiant gold, sun-kissed copper, and silver bullion. And we're going to be using all three of these colors on our background, but really highlighting on the copper probably and the gold because of what I'll be doing with the actual finished piece. So I'm gonna move these pieces to the side because whenever you have gilding flakes, you need to take those gilding flakes out of these containers and put them into a secondary container. There's a couple of reasons why. Because first of all, each of these will fill this up three times or more because they're very compressed in these jars. You can see how compressed that is. This is a brand new jar. You can see how that's really compressed in there. And when you take it out, first of all, when they make gilding flakes, they make them in nice big long sheets. And then they compress them together and stick them in the jar. So when you take them out, you literally need to kind of pull them apart a little bit. You see how even that, not perfectly pulled apart because you don't want to waste any of this. And you get so much more that then comes in the jar. I mean, you can even see as I'm pulling on this, I probably did this one fast for a class and didn't pull this out normally, but you, you can really see how it expands. You want to make sure you do that so you don't waste flakes. Okay, so I am going to be working on a background here. This is a black piece of paper that I have covered one side of with Xyron adhesive. If you don't have Xyron adhesive, you can use carpet tape or double-sided adhesive paper, which can get pricey. So if you have a Xyron, it's the best way to do it. And what I, using black because black reflects the black glitter the best when we put the black glitter on there. So I'm going to just remove this paper backing, expose the adhesive and leave it face up on here. Now, Here's the part where it gets a little fun and I discovered this technique because I made a mistake and I'll explain that in a second. So first of all, I'm going to show you this stencil and I apologize for it. I'll use this side because it looks cleaner. Um, this is called a texture fade stencil. This is a stencil by A Colorful Life Designs. And you can see it's thicker. The design is thicker through here and thinner through here. And what that does is it causes a, and creates a really cool faded look when you're doing this. So. When you do the texture fade, you wanna make sure that you pay attention to where that fade is and which sides you want that fade on your, on your cardstock. So I'm just gonna have the fade be in the center portion here. And I'm putting that right over the adhesive. Yes, you're seeing me do that right. That is right over the adhesive. Now the good thing about putting it right over the adhesive is I don't need to tack this down because obviously that's, that's held on there pretty well. So as soon as I do that, I'm gonna take the gilding flakes and I'm gonna start just putting them on top, spreading them a little bit so I don't get one bunch of color in one section. And I really want a lot of copper on this one because I really love the copper on this card. I'm just pushing it all over, getting it in the holes. And again, it's not moving around because the, uh, the adhesive on the paper is actually holding that stencil in place. So you don't have to worry about it jiggling, wiggling too much. So I'm going all over on that one. And you notice I'm just pushing it in there. I don't want too much because I don't want to waste any of this. And I'm using the big flakes and the little flakes. So I'm pulling the little flakes back in as I do this. Getting that all in that hole. And I really want to cover these, every single hole with, with gilding flakes. So as I get it to this point, I think I'm going to take my brush here and take the excess gilding flakes and I'm going to start pushing it in. See how that makes a difference? I'm pushing it into those holes. It's areas my fingertips are not getting to. What it also does is it burnishes it. And by burnishing it, it's keeping the, keeping the color in there. So for this particular technique, because 
we're burnishing it when the br with the brushes we're putting it in I would recommend trying not to use too much at once because you're going to it creates tiny little slivers of pieces that really I don't know if I would save them um, especially when they're mixed if they're not mixed you can kind of stick them back in the jar normally like a big piece like this I could take that put I could take these and put them back in the jar and I keep something called a mixed grow and my mixed grow is when I have different colors of gilding flakes that I am um, different colors of gilding flakes that I'm using that are like that the mixed grill is all the colors and then I can just use the mixed grill as opposed to pulling out of the individual jars so what I'm gonna do is the parts I don't want to use again I'm gonna put on half this paper and the other part I'm gonna put on the other parts of this paper let me just get this good and done yes I am really burnishing this I'm just gonna lift this whole paper up. I'm gonna put these in the appropriate containers and I'll be right back at ya. Oh, I have this and my paper. Here's the tricky part. When I decided I was gonna do this for a class, I forgot that once I lifted all that off, all that adhesive is showing. So now I have beautiful gilding, which I mean, you have to admit that's pretty gorgeous. But then I have all the adhesive showing. So what do you do with that? Well, you make use of it. I'm going to use this black glitter. I'm going to put it all over the top of this. Yes, and I know this will appall some people that I'm dumping glitter on top of this instead of spooning it out of a big container. But my normal container of black glitter is packed with my classroom supplies, so I have to use what I have right now. So I'm just going to move this all over this. Tap off front and back cap off you're not going to lose too much glitter on this trust me and then I'm going to gather this glitter up and then I'm going to put this back and I'm going to burnish this so the finer the glitter is um, the more velvety this is going to look so I'm just going to rub this all over with my fingers and right now it looks like it's making muddying up the uh, the gilding flakes but it's actually not It'll come right off those gilding flakes. So I'm just pushing it down to make sure that there's no adhesive parts or no exposed adhesive. Tap that off frequently. Get rid of the excess. Then I'm going to come back with my brush. Again, this is just a stiff stencil brush. You can use any stiff brush. And I'm just going over this now to remove any excess glitter. This is part of the reason I use black paper with this, with black glitter, because what happens is the black will reflect back the black glitter, but if you miss any portions or if your glitter is just a little bit too thick, like if you're not using ultra fine glitter like I'm not, you really don't notice areas not having a, a huge amount of glitter. Okay, so this is burnished enough. You can do this until you can't see anything else come off because you do not want glitter everywhere. And look at this piece. You get the beautiful texture fade on that. So here it's thinner and there it's thicker. The gorgeous, gorgeous gilding flakes and the beautiful glitter on there. So you can really kind of see how that super shiny, super pretty, and makes an absolutely stunning card. So that's how you make the glitter gilded background. I hope you enjoyed this video today. If you did, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And I will, thanks for stopping by today. I'll see you next time.